Good evening, everybody. It is Friday. Happy weekend. Uh, we are live. It's 8 o'clock. HO 11 Weather Center. Time for your 8 o'clock tropical update. We are in the peak of hurricane season. We're actually technically past the peak. It was September 10th. Now here we are September 12th. We're on the we're on the downside. We're easing our way down the backside of the roller coaster. But anywhere in here, and even into October, we get a secondary peak, and so there's still you know half the season, if not more, to go as far as potential activity in the open Atlantic and the Caribbean and the Gulf. And so we will continue to take this one day at a time. Just for comparison, early season, uh, end of May, June, first part of July, this is where you get a lot of activity. This is where we had plenty of activity in, uh, in June and early July. And now that we're in the peak season, look at the difference. Like everything is open for possibility. Statistically, we see storms that can develop really anywhere in the basin, including the main development region, which is actually a spot that we are watching, monitoring for potential development over the next seven to 10 days. Uh, again, the forecast from Colorado State, it matches NOAA's long range uh, seasonal outlook forecast as well. They're calling for 16 storms, 14 is normal. So that means they're calling for an above normal season. That being said, uh, so far we've had six named storms, five tropical storms and one hurricane, and to date, we are about 30% below the, what we usually see as far as the amount of accumulated cyclone energy in the Atlantic Basin. So we're 30% behind for the season at the halfway point in a season where experts were calling for an above normal season. So we're below those forecast numbers as well. But again, it just doesn't matter. Um, we don't know how many storms are going to be. We take our best guess and then we'll see what Mother Nature throws at us. There have been many seasons where we've had, you know, where one an example, 1983, where uh, Houston Galveston was took a direct hit from major hurricane Alicia. That was the A storm didn't hit till August and it was the only storm to hit the continental US that year. I think we had a total of five named storms that entire season. It was the quietest season on record and we got a major hit from a major hurricane. So it just, it's strange how stats work out like that. Uh, they're forecasting eight hurricanes and three majors. So far we have had one hurricane and it did become a major. That was Aaron. That one is the one hurricane we've had went to Cat 5. Otherwise, Andrea, Barry, Chantal, Dexter, and Ferdinand were piddly little tropical storms. It came and went very quickly, short-lived, very, very weak, minimal tropical storms. And so it has been a season of extremes, tiny little systems that come and go quickly, and then one gigantic hurricane. I think the other interesting thing is that that hurricane did not make landfall anywhere. It missed everything. The eye never crossed land, even through the islands and off the east coast. Uh, we look at ocean heat content for, you know, where is the energy available to feed a storm if it were to develop. The uh, deepest energy content is here in the Western Caribbean. So there's tons of energy there. Doesn't mean we're going to get a storm, but if one were to cruise through here in the second half of the season, it would have a lot of energy to pull from. This uh, ocean heat content measurement takes into account sea surface temperature right at the surface and how deep that warm water goes. That's important because if you get a, especially a hurricane, a big hurricane that's churning across the ocean surface, it will actually upwell. It will pull uh, water up from uh, you know 100 feet or more down uh, underneath the surface. It'll pull that warmth up, feed on it, and so that's why ocean heat content is an important measurement to see where where we really have the the deepest amount of energy. And really, the entire Carib has a ton of energy just waiting to be fed upon if a storm can get in there. Now, when we actually look at the skin, the sea surface temperature, the skin temperature of the ocean. It's highest in the Gulf, but you saw that's not where the deepest energy is. The deepest energy is sitting right in here. Well, they are 87 there at the Yucatan Channel, so that does make sense. But again, this is where there's more energy here than there is in the Gulf, even though the skin temperature is the same. And then as we look at the open Atlantic, we've got plenty of warm water in the main development region, 82 to 84. As I mentioned, anything 80 or above is like checking a box. That's warm enough to produce a Cat 5 hurricane. Uh, just because you have uh, very, very high sea surface temperatures absolutely does not mean you're going to have a whole lot of hurricanes. It's just checking a box. It means there's enough energy for a hurricane to fire. You can get a Cat 5 at 80 degrees. You can get a Cat 5 at 90 degrees. 
So what's going on right now? There are three active tropical waves. None of them are in the Caribbean or the Gulf. So this is quiet as a mouse right now. Wave number one showing no signs of development. Wave number two, absolutely no signs of development. Wave number three, this is one that just came off the west coast of Africa overnight. And so now here we are this evening and it's out here near the Cape Verde Islands. It is not showing any signs of development right now. Uh, Hurricane Center does give this a 40% chance for development as it moves on to the west and west northwest. We're gonna take a look at that forecast, that outlook in just a moment. Uh, there are a couple of interesting things that are happening, and I'll show this to you when we look at the dust. This wave has kicked out a bunch of dust with it, so it's carrying the, uh, the ingredients for its own demise. Dust can zap tropical system formation. This one has a bunch of dust that it's carrying with it. It may not develop at all because of that dust. And the next wave, which is brewing here over West Africa, look at the big thunderstorms here. Well, guess what it's doing? It's also kicking up a tremendous amount of dust, and this one will bring another plume of dust with it, and that may inhibit its future development as well. So this is the outlook as we stand Friday evening. And again, for the moment, nothing on our doorstep. That can change tomorrow morning. Uh, this time of the year, things can happen quickly, so you got to watch an update at least once a day. That's the price of living on the Gulf Coast. Uh, this is the wave that we just looked at, wave number three. Once it gets in this region, Hurricane Center gives it a medium, a 40% chance for development. What do the models say? So this is the GFS and the Euro, the two big dogs in the global modeling world. Uh, when storms haven't developed and we want to look at long range to see what the modeling tells us about its future development, if at all, we look at these two first. And these two, well, they close off a low. Each one closes off a low. Again, these models running simultaneously. So you've got the GFS, the American model solution right here with a weak tropical low. And then you've got the European model solution, same spot with a weak tropical low. But I mean, that is, that is weak. That is not an intense system that either of these models are forecasting. And that's not until Wednesday of next week. So we have plenty of time to watch it. Nothing out there is gonna happen overnight. And as we look at the modeling uh, results in the Caribbean, the Gulf, and again, you see a lot of long, straight isobars. Nothing brewing out here. So we stay quiet, say the models uh, close to home through Wednesday. Again, long range modeling is fun to look at. Uh, and then we get up and take it one day at a time because things can change. It can change by tomorrow afternoon. So make sure you're watching an update once a day, even through the weekend. We're talking about that dust. This is, this is the wave we looked at. It'll be here by tomorrow and you can see the plume of dust that it has with it. And then you can also see the next plume that's gonna come off with the next wave. So dust may end up being the biggest part of the tropical story this season if this continues. Now watch as this wave and this dust, I'll put this in motion, and what you'll notice is as it gets in here, it's gonna kind of curly cue. You'll see a little curly cue. That's the model suggesting we're gonna get a low trying to form as that moves this way. But the curly cue literally is the dust being pulled into that developing circulation and that could zap the whole thing. So watch right here, there, right there, there's your curly cue. See the curly cue of dust? You know, that is a signature of a storm that's not gonna develop with that dust being pulled into it. And then here's the dust. You can see it already kind of curly cueing into whatever trying to form there. Dust is that dry sinking layer that can really inhibit tropical development. It appears that that has also been a factor of the first half of the season, keeping the storm count below normal. So that's where we stand with dust and modeling and what's going on out there right now, which is zilch. When you look out further to the 17th through the 23rd of September, basically near the second half of September, this is a product that the Hurricane Center puts out uh, development odds. So what this product is a combination of statistics, what, what we normally see, what climatology tells us about this time of the hurricane season, and climatology tells us that we can get development here. So that's one reason why they've painted it, just simply because we've seen it before. And then it does take into account what is actually happening atmospherically in the long range modeling, the 17th through the 23rd, 
and those two combine and they say, yeah, this is a spot we're going to have to keep an eye on. So it's no surprise that we have a potential development there over the next five days. This is a little, a little different. We're heading into fall. We've got the fall autumnal equinox uh, coming up in, uh, in, in three days. So what will happen in the fall, spring and fall, is you'll get this Central American gyre. It's just like a very broad, weak area of low pressure that'll sit over Central America. And every now and then you'll get a little, little low that'll be able to get organized and be spun off and get thrown into the Gulf. And that can cause tropical development. So just based on climatology, that's what we know tends to happen this time of the year. That's why we've painted it in orange for a spot just to keep an eye on. But at the moment, there's nothing out there. And climatologically and uh, what's going on right now with the atmosphere says that we're going to get more development here. In fact, we have an active tropical system here and another spot in the Pacific that we are monitoring, not forecast to hit land. Weekends here, Saturday, summertime has returned, stuck on us. 95 is a high temp Saturday, 10% chance for an isolated shower Saturday. We'll basically do this all weekend long. We'll do it through Monday. We're going to stay with highs in the mid to maybe even upper 90s to the middle of the week. I've got no significant rain chance as after what was a wet, you know, heart of summer, now that we've moved into September, meteorological fall, we're getting hot and dry weather. So sprinkler systems and your garden hose will be running for the next seven days. That's where we stand. Next live update on KHOU 11 News at 10 o'clock tonight. We'll see you then for the next update.